Okay, so there's something that has been on my mind as of lately, and what better venue than to speak about it than here at FIU Toastmasters. And I just want to say that us, as a Western civilization, a civilization that is very fortunate and is very safe, we all need to start changing our perception of the situations that are happening in the Middle East. Specifically, I want to talk about tonight about the Syrian refugee crisis. I know that I might get political. It's really hard not to these days, I feel, to not get political about situations that way. It's a very political situation right now in that country. You have five factions who are fighting for different demands. And to be honest, I'm not anyone who nearly has a solution for what is going on. To be honest, I have a hard time understanding what the issue is with so many factions going on. I have a hard time differentiating them. But what I do know is that there are innocent people that are being caught up in this conflict. There are innocent people who are maybe stuck in that country, who are afraid that they are going to die. And then there are people who are able to flee, but then face death and face other factors when they leave that country. Now, there are 13.5 million Syrian refugees in need of humanitarian assistance as identified by the United Nations. That is 13.5 million people. That is the equivalent of South Florida being in a refugee crisis two times over. And I want us all to think about, for a second, what it is to live the life of a refugee, and specifically a Syrian refugee, that within a matter of a few years, your home, your community, became war-torn, became this bombed-out shell of a country that became so dangerous that you had no other decision, no other option, but to pick up everything you own. You and your family picked up everything that you could possibly grab with your hands and you ran. You ran as far away from your home, from your community, as fast as possible. What a sad, tumultuous, crazy story for someone to go through. And I want you all to think about that. I want you all to think of whether or not you would have that kind of bravery to pick up every, um, what you could pick up in your arms and leave everything that you know. We all need to start sympathizing a little bit more about what is going on over there. And I want to specifically turn the topic to the children in Syria who have grown up knowing nothing but war, carnage, nothing but dismay around them. These are children who have spent their lives running away, just keep, keep going, keep going. They don't have a home, they don't have anywhere permanent to be but they just keep running. They are almost like they are playing the deadliest game of tag, you're it, that this world has ever seen. And it's a problem. We have a whole generation of children who are growing up knowing nothing but carnage and war. And I cannot imagine the permanent effects that that's gonna have on the psyche of this world. And I do feel like there are steps that need to be taken to prevent tragedies like this from happening. Again, I do not have the solution to it. No one does. I like to think that one day that maybe we would find it. But I want, I want you all to think about that, to think about what a tumultuous life that a Syrian refugee is living. You know, they, they arrive to a strange country in which half of the people in that country tell them to go back, go back where you came from, go back to your war-torn community. Go back to a country, a place that you can't even walk down the street to a supermarket without the fear of a bomb going off in your face. Go back to that. I don't know about you, but if someone told me to do that, I don't believe I would be the person to just shrug and say, all right, you're right, I'll go back. And I don't think anyone in this room would also do that same thing. I think that they would they would take on the racial and ethnic slurs, the, just the prejudice that's against them in maybe a country that they're entering, because that's better than risking the safety for themselves and their families staying in the country that they came from. 
So I don't believe that, that it would go back. Now, in that regard, in that regard, you have to ask yourself, you know, were these people invited to our country? No. Are they making attempts to become U.S. citizens? To be honest, I don't know the answer. And then you also have to finally ask yourself, do they deserve the American dream if they're coming to America? Do they deserve that experience? I would like to think that anyone with good morals, good values, and a hard work ethic does deserve the American dream. But let's say that they don't. If they don't necessarily deserve the American dream, does that mean that they deserve to be living in a nightmare? You tell me. Thank you.